gonna try and do a bone pool test. Ah! Welcome to another episode of Food Finders. Today we are still in the west because the west side is the best side. We're going to refer to our guide here, 16 best food secrets in Jurong that's worth the travel time. But Jurong is a very big place so we're going to split up to Jurong East and Jurong West. And for this episode, we are going to focus more on Jurong East. So we are now here at Yuhua Place and we're going to check out the first food spot. Okay, so let's go. Hey, where's, where's the kuih? Eh? Ah, queue. Okay, let's queue for this first. Hello, you this place the most famous food is what? I can't eat all of them. All of them Okay, let's queue for the and sun kuih. So this is the Lai Heng handmade Teochew Kueh. Come get your daily kueh fix. Try the sun kueh and the fried peng kueh, ku chai kueh. Oh shit, I didn't get the ku chai, but I got the peng kueh la. And the uh, sun kueh. The other item that we got was the Sungai Road Laksa. They are famously very angsty la, but I think this is like a branch, not sure it's a branch of franchise la. So, you know, uh, this is also recommended on our list. Hopefully this is good. And we're gonna just wash all this down with my Michael Jackson or Black and White uh, for those of you who are too young to know who is Michael Jackson, get educated, man. I'm just simply Michael Jackson. Okay, so first up is the Sun Kui. The owner is quite nice, la. like he added like a lot of um, a lot of black sauce for me, the sweet sauce and some chili. So we're gonna try it. Sun Kui is good, yeah. I'm glad I got it right. It takes a while longer. But I think we waited like I don't know, five five ten minutes more. A bit more texture la, than like just steam. The the skin is super soft, but okay, let me try the Sun Kui first. The yeah, bangkok is a lot heavier in flavor lah, cause it's like you know, mostly rice. Bangkok is really good, though. it has this subtle sweetness. But I love their skin. The skin is super soft. Like it's slightly chewy, um, a bit like mochi texture. I make the kuih is every day, so it's damn nice. I can see why this is very popular. This is honestly one of the best kuih I've tried lah. I give this like a four point five stars probably. Wait, let me think about it. I think we we'll just give it five stars. It's a really good Teochew, traditional Teochew kuih. Okay, moving on next dish. Sungai Road Prachao Laksa. It's pretty simple lah. It's just bihun with laksa gravy. You got the chili. I, I have actually tried the Jalan Berse one. It's really good. The small bowl was four dollars. You can add extra ham for two dollars. So you can see this portion has extra ham. We're gonna mix it up uh, just to cook the cockles a little bit. A bit too raw for me. Okay, so you can see like little bits in the soup. So this is the minced shrimp. Not too bad, flavor is still there. It's still quite prevalent, but it's a bit thin. I think the soup can be a bit more kao. Like the base flavor is there, la. although I would say the original style is still uh, probably better. 3.5 probably, I'll give this a 3.5 stars. But do check out the original store. I think that is like super good. This is a slightly inferior version to the Jalan Berse original uh, Sungai Road Laksa. La. Okay, shum. Transition. Richie's Crispy Puff. So we're gonna just do a quick tapao of a curry puff. Uh, can you do a curry puff? Lo. You're just a day to day to day. So yeah, this is the Richie's Curry Puff. I'm gonna give it a try. A bit empty. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna bite a bit deeper because like, my first bite like got nothing. Not too bad. Feeling could be more generous, but no, not the. It's all good, no worries. Here we go. Six, seven. Better than your average curry puff. I'll say 3.5 is like a bit better. Like 3 would be average of me, like, but slightly better, but not, not super amazing. Like, versus like a lot of the other curry puffs that I had. The, the crust and all are still pretty thin, uh, but feelings like they made it like so big, but there's like pockets of air. You know, like when you buy potato chips, right, then 25% is air. So that's the feeling I get with this curry puff. It's not much chicken also, it tastes mostly potato and the turmeric taste is a bit too strong for me so eh, overall feeling is so so neat. So okay, let's go, we're gonna walk to uh, Bakote now. Hello, can you give me a bit of 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 a bit of
Uh, Mayo, a bit of fun, or just tongue. Okay, anyway, so we are at uh, Juicia Pakote. I think this is highly recommended by a lot of people. Juicia Pakote is extremely peppery but very shook. Suggest first timers have a small sip of soup first to ease themselves into it. it sounds very hyped up. <laughs> uh, we're gonna try the soup first. Very hearty. The pepper flavors are very strong, so. Okay, so this is the. I'm gonna try and do a bone pool test. Ah! Anyway, we just gonna dunk it in black sauce and chili. Oh, this part is a bit dry. I think the soup is really good. There's a lot of flavor. It's mostly pepper because it's like Singapore style uh, pakote, la, right? Uh, the meat though, a bit dry, even though we got the $9 uh, premium rib version. I thought like if it's like really tender, it would be able to like, you know, the bone like just pulls out. La. So kind of failed that. But soup is good though, so meat was a bit disappointing. Uh, I'll give this Slightly above average again, 3.5 stars. So that's it for Juicia. I think those are the only comments I have. Okay, on to the next spot. Lightning transition. Right here at Enak. Enak, Enak, Enak. Okay, I think it's Enak. Pretty Ulu Prata shop. I've actually tried this maybe eight years ago. Feels like they branded a little better now. Like it was more cha cha last time. We got two, uh, two kosong. So we're here at uh, Inak. It is uh, Indonesian for delicious or tasty. Uh, we got the kosong prata. Uh, it's 120. Minimum is two pieces. Uh, it actually looks big and it actually looks really good. Like you can hear the ASMR. I like to whisper too. Uh, the crispiness on the prata is like pretty amazing. Like you have your curry and also comes with chili. So this is quite unusual for prata. Hopefully the uh, recipe and taste all have been retained. Because eight years ago when I tried it, it was really, really good. Okay, it looks quite promising. Like when you cut in, it's like really crispy, man. And it, it looks a lot bigger for a kosong prata. Uh, yep, so let's try. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. There's this subtle sweetness in the prata. Inside is very soft, outside is very crispy. Oh shit, this is actually still very good. I was a bit worried because like, I thought the standard had gone down. But this is actually really good. First glance you see like this crispy outer edge and I think this is really because they are basting the prata, right? They're scooping oil and they're just pouring it over and over again. So it really creates this crispy outer edge. Okay, okay let, me, let me try to leave it. The chili is more salty than spicy actually. It's quite unusual, you don't usually get like chili for prata. I actually really like Nina. I'll give it a 5 actually for prata. This is actually pretty good standard. If I know how they fry the prata like upon order as well. So you need to wait a little bit but totally worth it. Lah. Okay, so we're done with here. We're gonna drive off to the next spot. Okay, so now we are struggling with focusing. Okay, we're gonna move off to the next spot in Jurong East. Okay, so we are at this uh, coffee shop which has Sai Shun curry fish head. And this whole coffee shop only has one restaurant, which is Sai Shun. Right, so in the afternoon they open up their economic rice section. So like you can come here and you see a lot of people ordering dishes for economic rice. So that's that's fine. Then at night they only do zi cha rice. What is most famous for Zai Sun right is really the fish. Right? The fish is super fresh. Rather than the curry fish head, although they are called curry fish head. The steamed fish is actually one of the most popular <coughs> one of the most popular items. Right, so here we got this Hong Shi Uh the fish are all seasonal. So it really depends on what, what comes in during the day. Right, so here we got the steamed fish, which is 32 for this size. We did a bean sauce steam style. So I've actually been here quite a few times. This is actually a very popular spot. In fact, the, the, the guys here are a bit like, you know, not very happy with us filming also, of course, you know. They are more like, please uh, don't shoot already. Like, we have too many people here already, you know, the day. Don't want more people to know about this place. <laughs> but too bad, we are still gonna feature it. Okay, so we're gonna try. A ton of pork lard is always a good sign. So I love that it is 
you know, steam upon order. So it's really at the side, they'll show you like what fish they have. You can pick whatever you want. So again, I, I have been here before. This is highly recommended by a lot of people living in uh, Durong. And this is really, really good. Like the fish is very fresh. You don't get any like sing way, you know, like the fishy, the fishy smell when it's like kept too long. And I love how they do it quite simply. That's not like a huge number of items on the menu, but they do each item very, very well. Super tender, very nice balance of the sauce. There's a slight spiciness to the toe. Goes very well with the fried, fried pork lard. Yeah, so I really like that they actually have the fish head on a plate and then they just throw the whole plate into the steamer. So the plate gets quite hot also and when, it, uh, when it comes out, right? Overall, I'll say Chai Sun deserves a 4.5 star from me. Just minus half a point because it's not very friendly service. But overall, for food and the quality, value for money and all is really quite top-notch then on to the next spot walking there we are at uh, Yuhua village food center as you can see uh, there's actually a lot of stalls featured in our guide here however unfortunately they are under renovation so just to mention again there's a difference between Yuhua food center and Yuhua village same same but different as you can see it's closed so oh well you just gotta try something else then okay let's go so we got Try and find this other pancake. It's not supposed to be a spa. Yeah, I'm at loss. Wait, 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 wait. That should be down here, I guess. It's really food finders trying to find <laughs> find the damn place. This is not on the list. I just did some research and I found this place quite interesting. So I like Minjiang Kui also. Let's go. Okay, so we got our Bing Jiang Kui. We got the traditional one. So they also do like crispy version here. Uh, and there's a mini one also. They do normal waffles as well and ice cream. So the interesting thing about uh, this Han and Han right is I've never seen a Bing Jiang Kui store have like a seating area and like a cafe before. I guess they must be doing something right la, <laughs> to have such a big space. You can see the peanut has a more, kind of looks like peanut butter, like, like it's a bit creamy, but there's also chunks. It tastes like peanut butter, but it's a lot sweeter than peanut butter though. So it might be like a homemade peanut spread kind of thing. But yeah, it's a good combination of like junky bits yet creamy. And minjang kue itself is quite fluffy. You can see there's like quite a bit of air in the minjang kue. So it's not like very dense. Uh, the outside is relatively firm. It's slightly crispy on the outside. I would probably give Han and Han a 4 stars. Yeah, it's not too bad for minjang kue, but like, yeah, it's, it's not like one well, of the, the best minjang kue I've had in my life. And then we're gonna hop back in the car to our last spot. So I think so far we've had mostly like hawker coffee shop food. So we're gonna go to this bistro kind of place. Uh, it's called Gyuko. If Benjamin King is watching, uh, if you would like to do a, a free <laughs> guest host for us, uh, do let us know. In fact, anyone that wants to do a free guest host and who is comfortable in front of the camera, do let us know. Sounds very good. Cool. We're here at Vision Exchange. It's some industrial building. This is quite ulu la, but you can see there's a stretch of shops here uh, with some drinking places. Uh, but what we're gonna try today is the Gyu Ko, uh, which is a Gyu Don Bistro. So at Gyu Ko, we got the truffle foie gras wagyu don, and then there is the curry udon, and then we have the chicken namban here. At Gyu Ko, you know, we want to present something a bit different rather than the usual hawker centers and stuff. This is 990. Oh, sorry, this is this is 1990. Uh, so truffle uh, with foie gras and wagyu don is 1990. So this is a uh, Australian wagyu. Definitely don't expect like Japanese wagyu for like less than $10, it's impossible. It's pretty fatty, sliced up into strips, kind of like a yakiniku style. Oh, I like that they actually used real truffle. So a lot of places where you go for like, when they say truffle, it's just truffle oil. And if I'm not wrong, this seems like some kind of chopped up blended truffle sauce thing. One small annoyance here is it's, it's beside the MRT track. So, Every few minutes, there's a freaking train going past. Train! Three, two, one, let's go. Oh, it broke from an unexpected side. Okay, we're gonna try a bit of the wagyu with the rice and I have a bit of egg mixed in. A bit lighter on flavor, but the beef is very tender. Okay, you really need to like, mix everything up, then I think it tastes better. So there's a lot of fat going on, right? So for what I was also kind of fatty, the wagyu that's also fatty 
So you mix the egg and it gives it more stickiness and texture. So uh, definitely you get a lot of tenderness from the beef, you get foie gras, you got big flavours from the truffle. Mmm, it's really good. Okay, we're gonna try the curry udon. Uh, so this is the Iberico pork. You can see, I like that the batter sticks to the meat. Okay, so I heard the stall here makes their own curry. So that's quite amazing. I don't think much stalls actually bother to make their own freaking Japanese curry. With pork lard. Was it like they blend uh, like pork fat into it or something like that? Yeah, yeah so I it gives like it they savoriness. pork lard in there. It's very different, like the curry is, yeah, there's usually this very common curry flavour but yeah, this tastes quite different, like the spice that is used, uh, the savouriness, the thickness, it's, it's all pretty, it's pretty unique. The katsu has this like butteriness at the end of it. I don't know how to describe but like after you bite for a while, it just melts into some kind of buttery like after finish. Not the typical Japanese curry, although this is supposed to be Japanese curry. I like this better than the don actually. Yeah. The last dish, yeah, chicken number. Could be slightly crispier though. But I like that the meat is huge. It's very big meaty pieces and it's not like predominantly better. So I've had like some karage where it's just like or the whole half the thing is like better. But this is like majority chicken meat, so that's good. Okay, so lastly I think I'm just gonna talk about the beer provo. Two Kirin beers for 990. So if you buy Kirin beer, you'll know that Kirin does not cost so cheap. So yeah, you can also come here for some drinks if you want. They they have wines, house pours and all uh, pretty affordable. Don't drink and drive. Uh so this is Gyuko, interesting choice of location. Wow. Good casual uh, food, especially the curry. I think curry was quite a highlight for me. Uh, makes a pretty affordable, good quality stuff. Feels like a lot of things are, are homemade, uh, including like the curry, so that's quite interesting. Uh, they don't use as much like you know, store-bought supply stuff, so I think that's a plus point for me. Four trains upon four. Because of all the trains here. <laughs> so this is the last stop for us in uh, Jurong East. So we're gonna magically appear back in the car. Boom. We have come to the end of our Jurong East food finders. Let's just do a recap uh, of what you guys like. The Prata. Uh, prata, okay. I think that was quite a highlight. That was one of like um, the five stars for today. The Teochew Kui. Teochew Kui was pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty simple live. They, they do it like in the store and you'll definitely get the uh, the Tsien de, which is like fried. Like. So they'll, they'll just fry it it's like for you. Cow. Like yeah, and the fillings uh, really complements it, right? Mixed together with like the rice and like a bit of like uh, radish. I think yuko was quite interesting. Oh, the curry was really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think the curry was ironically better than the better gyudon. than the gyudon itself. I feel like Jurong East did better than Clementi. It does bring a bit more pride back to the West. Clementi was a bit meh. Jurong East has quite a few good selections. If only Yuhua Village wasn't close, like the food centre wasn't close, I think we would have even more choices. La. We'll probably cover Jurong West. West sometime later on. Okay, so I think tying it up, we're gonna go into reading comments. There was this one that says, I thought he looked like Amos E brother, LOL. Come on, I don't look like Amos E. Do I look like him? I don't know. Kind of. Kind of? No, <laughs> come on. Okay, so we had guy in dark brown shirt, such a cutie. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that was uh that was Matthew. It's so uh I mean if you want his number, yeah, you know, just comment, out below. <laughs> comment below if you want uh Matthew's number, we'll we'll pass it to you. So we had this freaking funny uh typo by our editor. Cordyceps, haha. Quadriceps is leg muscle. Quadriceps law. Cordyceps. I did say cordyceps, uh, not cordyceps, uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, sm small typo there, la, you know, don't be so anal about it. Uh, okay, so I mean, thanks for the comments. I think there were a few like uh, recommendations of what else to eat in the episode as well, so uh, kudos to that. So this is the end of it. Uh, like, comment, subscribe to our channel, and we will see you next time. Bye! So just a funny thing that we noticed, the way she's holding the coffee is, you know, Physics-wise, impossible because this angle is clearly a photoshopped copy. If not, it'd be like spilling all over her already.